thanks to Beer for this talk about Spring Boot and Kotlin. Um, that is my first time in Amsterdam. That's my first time at Kotlin Conf. So I'm Nicola Frankel. Um, I love Kotlin. I love Spring Boot. And uh, as soon as uh, Kotlin was, uh, let's say, usable on the server side, I tried to, to, to play with it. And now I'm super happy that uh, inside of, uh, of Pivotal, there are initiatives to integrate them. And this talk will be about this. Um, I now work for a company called Exoscale. I switched jobs just recently. Before, I joked that uh, I work for a small startup called SAP. Uh, <laughs> Now, I really do work for a small startup in Switzerland, um, and I also changed my position from a consultant to a developer advocate. So um, if you enjoyed the talk, please go on the Exoscale website so that they can send me to other conferences. <laughs> uh, if you don't, well, um, now you can do whatever you want. Um, uh, we offer cloud computing services in, in, uh, in Europe, and so that means that our data centers are in Europe which means there is no cloud act letting greedy government get your, their hands on your data, if you know what I mean. Okay, uh, back to the talk. Who here is already a Spring Boot developer? Yeah, that's great. That's what I thought. So you know about Kotlin, you know about Spring Boot, you know everything. Um, so this slide is already gone. And uh, y you might have issues with Spring Boot. At some point, I had a talk saying hey, there is no magic about Spring Boot. He here is how it works. But still, there are a lot of annotations. You must know the annotation. The big issue with annotations is that it's very hard to follow the flow of program. I mean, it's not declarative, meaning that the annotation is handled somewhere, and there is no direct link between the annotation and the annotation handler. And it's very hard to understand. Yeah, you, you cannot put breakpoints on annotations, right? So many people are bitching against framework in general, again, Spring Boot and Spring in particular, saying, hey, it's all magical, and I want to be in control of my code. And at, at, in some places, I, I might agree, yeah, it's a lot of magic. And if you cannot spend the time to understand the framework, if you just want to do a quick fix to a, an existing application, there might be issue with that. Um, and so uh, in, in, the, there is an initiative inside of Pivotal that uh, says, OK, we heard you. We agree with that. Let's try to do the same, but with um, explicitness, with what they call functional configuration, which I think is, I, I might disagree on the term functional. I prefer to say explicit, explicit configuration. So instead of implicit, Let's have a real flow of the program. Let's see everything what happens. And let's put breakpoints if they need be. Demo time. Works for you? Great. Yeah, I don't like slideware so much. Um, so the first thing that uh, you might know already is that if you start a new project on, uh, on the um, start.spring.io, there is already Kotlin that is a first-class citizen. That's already super great as for me. Um, what I did is I created already a project because, yeah, I, I, I don't want to do everything here. That basically is a like a small cr like no, please. Uh, it's a small um, application that delivers a web service over a database that can let you read the repository. So everybody understand this code. Yes, great. Um, I just run it just to show you that it's not. No, that's not going to be fun too long. Okay, now if I go on this stuff. Yeah. It's not the right one. Up. Again, that's the end demo. I start the beginning demo. Never rehearse your demo just before. Never. I always say that, but I still do it because, yeah. OK. This should work now. This is very simple stuff. And of course, since I'm like I'm doing some rest stuff, I can access an, I an entity by its own handle. Huh? This, is, this is code here. OK? No magic. Everything works. 
Now I want to try to remove as much explicitness as possible. I want to remove uh, everything that seems like magic, like annotations. Okay, the first is, there is a bad news about that, is that first we need to migrate to reactive. Right now, we, m we need to migrate to reactive. It might change in the future. There is plan to change that, but right now, uh, there is no other way. So, the first thing is, I will use MongoDB. The second is I will replace the web by WebFlux because in Spring 5 you get reactive. And I will remove the database that is embedded, that is H2, with a MongoDB embedded. I mean, nothing mind blowing. I just replace everything. And normally at this point, Everything should work, or not? Yeah, I like interactive. <laughs> you cannot just like, uh, thanks for that. So it doesn't work because of the import. It doesn't work because of here it's not an entity anymore. And here it's not a, the flickering gets on my nerve. <laughs> It's not great. I hope you accept it because I cannot do anything against it. At this point, normally everything should be fine. I've replaced the dependency. I've replaced everything. So will it work or not? Yeah. yeah. You. No. Yeah, the, the, I used something very magic in Spring. I used the, like, hey, let's define a SQL file, and this will get imported automatically. And of course, since I'm now I'm using MongoDB, it doesn't work that well. So I need to migrate this the, like implicit stuff into something more explicit. So I will need to create a bean and to insert my data. No. No. Repository.insert, it doesn't know it. That's not very bad. Why? I love it. Ah, yes. Now I know. Um, I cannot use the paging and sorting repository. I need to uh, like change it to the reactive Mongo repository. Now it works again. And if you checked, uh, it went very fast, honestly. But here I have the iterable and the optional. And when I change it to the Mongo repository, which is reactive, it changes to like the reactive data types, the flux and mono. So let's restart everything. And normally at this point, it's a command line runner, so it will get executed when the application is run, when the context is created, and it inserts my data. And normally at this point, I should get my data inside. Yes. So I didn't change anything. Well, I just lost my transactions, huh? since it's Mongo, huh? no, trans no that. Who cares about transactions anyway? Um, but I still have this magic at bean stuff, and I don't like it so much. Uh, I have still have my REST controller. So what I would like to do is, the first thing I would want to do is to remove the controller and create roots. And I can do it something like that. Yeah, I won't type everything every time. Um, so here I can create, because in Spring 5 there is this return function uh, that lets you like handle that stuff uh, with not a real DSL, but like, and if you want it to be a bit more uh, DSL-y, you can do stuff like that, so that at least it gets your static import and stuff. So it's a bit better. And of course, this is only the first one. 
Um, a word of uh, an interesting stuff is that here I uh, cannot just get um, the person slash ID and put it into a path variable. I need to uh, get the path variable from the request itself. I need, to, again, it's not about annotations. I need to be explicit about it. And the second one I need to do is like that. And now, with some luck, that should be the equivalent, something like that. Let's start the application again and check. Are you familiar with this kind of, of uh, code already? Who is doing reactive stuff already? Yeah, the brave one. And I still have the same code running. Still works, everything is running. That's pretty good, right? That's pretty good. I already removed the controllers. Um, this is less magic. Uh, however, I, what I don't like into this code is that stuff. I mean, roots should be rooting. Here we already have like kind of like business logic. So let's apply the single rep responsibility principle and create a handler, that, a dedicated class to handle that stuff. And uh, let's wire it. So here I will just need, because here I have an expression body, I just need to do like that. I return it here. It tells me, hey, you should say the type. I tell it the type. And now I can, at this place, create a handler, which is a person handler, and pass it the repository. At this point, I'm able to just say handler.read1 and say, OK, I pass the request, which is IT in that case. And here, I can say handler.readAll and pass IT. This is a bit better. Now I have taken the like business-like code, whatever it is, and put it into a handler. And so the route does only routing to the place it's supposed to go. Let's check every time, because I'm a bit paranoid. Yeah, and there is a catch at some point. Yeah, I doesn't work. One will work. No, not M percent. Not M percent, not M percent. Yes. OK. This works as well. Uh, here at this point, we can say, hmm, this is nice. If you, if you um, attended the previous talk, we, you, you know about method references. So we can say here, let's, call, let's convert the lambda to a reference. I didn't change anything. I'm just using references. If you want, I can rerun, because just to be sure. But IntelliJ is converting it for me, so at this point, probably, there is not that much issue. Still works. So next stuff to migrate is now I have, uh, like, I have moved the controller to the bean. I have uh, moved that to uh, the, the logic to a handler. The handler is now completely annotation free. You can test it in, in isolation, completely uh, in isolation for unit testing. No magic required. I still have those bin method. And I mean, that's better than self-annotated class, because at least you, you, your like, main code is still free. But I would like to be as explicit as possible. And so I would uh, love to uh, remove those bin stuff. Let's do it. I create, and that is pretty brand new, uh, a beans method using the beans definition DSL. And that is the exact same stuff as here. I can remove it. 
Now the question is, how does it get cold? Well, there is a bit of a trick there. Um, we will register it using an auto-wired function. <laughs> Shit happens. <laughs> but at least it's just one simple like auto-wired annotation, and I can have all my beans there. At least that's what you think now. Um, does it still work? Yes. Perfect. So now your reaction would be... Uh, thank you. Come afterwards. I will give you a nice coupon for our clouds. Yeah, they are rewards if you are uh, interactive. Uh, I would like to do the same. So I, I, I will do the same here. Uh, but first, I will use... Likewise, I will use another DSL. There are so many DSLs, no, only two. But, I mean, I create another DSL, and likewise, I can remove it. And as you can... Sorry? I know. Uh, unfortunately... Um, resolution. Okay, I will reduce the resolution. Whoa. Better? Um, uh, now I need to reduce here as well, okay? No flickering that far? Everything is fine? Let's continue. Yeah. Thanks for the, the gentleman. Sorry, excuse me? A bit. Now I should zoom in. The I, I, I mean, you need to make some effort. Huh? This is not uh, free. You, you need to put some, some strength into that. Okay, so... <laughs> okay, I'm sorry for that. I unfortunately, I cannot do anything against that. But um, yeah, the code is available on GitHub. It's on my last slide. You will have the reference, so you can use it yourself and, and, and do the same stuff. So pretend you see the screen, the screen not flickering, please. Um, so now I've uh, used uh, the router DSL to create uh, a router, right? And um, basically, what I need to do is do the same as here. So I will replace this stuff and say, OK, here I create a new bean, right? And in this new bean and here, I need something from you. I, I need you to believe me. I will do that. What? WTF for uh, non-American speakers. Yes, so I think that deserves a bit of an explanation, right? Okay. I expected that. That's good. Okay. I am in my bin definition DSL, right? Mm, this is my context. So imagine I create a bin of type person handler, and that person handler requires a person repository. So far, so good? Okay. What I could do is say context.getBin and get me the bin of type person repository. Everybody who has done a bit of Spring can do that. Even though context.getBin, you should never do it yourself, right? Right. Well, that's pretty cool because this context is not available. It's like internal inside of the bin definition DSL. And if you look at the ref, it does a context.get bin here. So it's just a shortcut, right? No magic. Now the thing is, we say we want the bin of type person repository. 
and I wrote just that, no ref. I mean, ref, but no type. Why? Because again, if you attended the previous talk, you see that the function is inline and refied, meaning that it is kept at compile time. And because the person being, the person handler, sorry, requires a type of person repository, ref is smart enough to understand what type it needs. Magic anymore or just simple code? Yeah, type inference. <laughs> Rayfied type inference, which is even better. Okay, so is that good? And then the next step I will uh, display it in the end. So do we all agree on that? Great, thanks. Would have been pretty awkward otherwise. <laughs> and now I started. Again. Oh. Oops. Doesn't work anymore. The issue there is that there is a lifecycle issue because the roots, they need to be declared and inferred at the beginning of the lifecycle. And when this function is called, it's already too late. What shall we do? Any ID? Okay. I will create a beans initializer class with a specific method. And no, I don't want that. Beans initializer. And here I must use application context initializer. Now, what I can do is I can remove the auto-wired, finally. I hate auto-wired. And how does this stuff get called? Well, there is a nice property. Called context.initializer.classes. Who knew about it? Yeah, good, good point. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know about it. So um, this is how you solve the issue. So now I have this bin initializer, and I remove the auto wires, and now everything should be working again. No, because now I need to pass a bin of type person handler. I forgot because here what I'm telling them is yeah, here is yeah, take the bin of type person handler, but I have no bean of type person handler. So I should do something like that, person handler, and say ref here. And now it's the same. It's person handler needs a thing of type person repository. The person repository, because I'm using Spring Data, is already in the context, so normally that should work. And yes, it works again. And now if you followed my points, you might say something at this point saying, it's still super implicit. If you don't know about this property, what can you do? So I remove the annotations and put them in a property file. If you don't have IntelliJ, if you don't look at the documentation, it's very hard to auto-discover that stuff. Okay. Fair point. Uh, so what we can do is remove the property. And in the function, we can explicitly add initializers. That is much better, right? That is explicit. And now you can follow the flow of the code from the beginning. C++ 
still works. But I mean, developers are lazy, right? Who is not lazy here? Really? Yeah, developers are lazy. So that, that class is pretty just a, a thin wrapper about this call. It's pretty stupid. It's pretty useless. Uh, the good thing about the DSL, the bin DSL, is that here we can directly call the bins function because the bins function that is defined here, I will do that. This is a bin, bin uh, definition DSL, and if I uh, check bin definition DSL, sorry, no, not that one. Where is it now? Here. The bin definition DSL, it already inherits from the same type. So this is just a shortcut and you don't need that class anymore. So we can remove this bin initializer class and we can start again. And now it works. At this point, I have like, like documents notwithstanding, I have one single annotation in my application. The rest is just everything is declarative. That is pretty cool, right? Who think this is pretty cool? But some of you might argue that this is still too much magic around. I mean, what does a Spring Boot application annotation does? Yeah, you wonder, right? <laughs> yeah, me as well. Um, what we can do, and then I, I won't code it because I'm, again, I, I'm super lazy for that. Um, I will just remove everything we have done so far and check the latest stuff. And behold, if it works, please do work. This is my new poem. I've added an artifact called Kofu. I don't know how it's pronounced. I pronounce it Kofu because like uh, Kung Fu, but uh, perhaps it's not that much. But it means Kotlin functional. Again, it's more declarative uh, than functional, but anyway. Previously, we had to put our plugins. You might know that if you use Spring Boot and Kotlin, Spring Boot will try to uh, inherit from your configuration classes. And by default, Kotlin classes are final. They are not open. They cannot be inherited from. So we had to uh, add this compiler plugin to make those open keyword automatic. No more. No more. Some people are super happy here, and I'm happy about that. <laughs> and now. This is the application. No single annotation. Nothing. Everything can... Be, yeah, not this one. Ah, okay. <laughs> oh, come on. This is Mongo. Huh? Um, but this is a simple main function. And this simple main function calls the app.run method. And it can be found. Everything is in the code. And is, this app is declared here. And there is a new DSL called application DSL. And everything here works out of the box, and more importantly, can be checked upon. You can say, oh, what does this server does? Blah, blah, blah. And now if I try to run the stuff and I run a simple Kotlin class, I run no Spring Boot, blah, 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 in IntelliJ. I run a single Kotlin class. I've got the exact same result. But everything is declared, everything is explicit. Same stuff. Same stuff. Yeah, at this point, in general, someone say, hey, but. Sorry? Excuse me again? New lines, yeah. 
And I didn't change the application or properties, but again, this is not explicit, so it's not taken into account. But what we can do is, even if you don't know anything, you can check that there is this Jackson stuff. And here, inside the code, you can say this dot and any IDE, which is basically even midly smart, can tell you there is something like that. Yeah, perhaps even VS Code, I don't know. <laughs> Never used it, uh, don't take me wrong. A lot of people use it, I should probably try. And here, indent output true, fix everything. Yeah, you don't know the API, don't worry. Just try to auto-complete and use the IDE, it will work for you. You don't need to browse into the tons of Spring documentation that you have. Everything is available. Mm, codec, you, everything, like embedded, this, dot, whatever, and then you can, it, it's a proper DSL. I mean, who likes that? <laughs> Great. I, I, I'm, just do, I'm just doing the demo, I, I didn't code anything. Eh? <laughs> no. So, the first takeaway of that is that um, you need to be reactive, yet. Might change in the future, I hope it changes, because again, I'm not uh, a reactive guy but right now you need to migrate to reactive. Afterwards, you take your roots, sorry, you take your controllers, you migrate them to roots. You take the logic that could have been into your service or your controller, you put them into handlers. And you use that using the router DSL, Kotlin router DSL. Beans, you use the bean definition DSL. And that's all. Afterwards, again, if you want to go further, like I, I displayed that, uh, you use something called SpringFu that has basically two implementations so far, KoFu and JaFu, which is made by this guy sitting here. Yeah. <laughs> Just a word of advice. This is experimental. Some stuff might end up in Spring Boot, some stuff might not. I would really, really be cautious about using it now in production. We are developers, we love the bleeding edge, but at the end, the software must still run. So be careful about that. Uh, you can, of course, like I do, play with it, but perhaps not use it right now, right out of the bat. And so basically, this configuration is now an incubator. This project is an incubator, and Sebastian will work on it, like have some feedback because you will be using it, change it, blah, 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 and at the end it will, or not, some parts or not might end up in the main Spring Boot repository. So just that I displayed, then you have the slides, you have explicit configuration, no more annotations at all, everything is explicit and declarative. The good thing about that is, uh, who knows about Graal VM? Yeah, half the room. So Graal VM is a new um, project by Oracle that basically, one of the features of Graal VM is that it allows you to take a jar, or a class, but basically a jar, and compile it to native code. I mean, everybody loves Java, but uh, the greatness, the performance of Java is because you run it server-side, over a long period of time, and that it improves its performance over time because it checks which path is most taken, blah, blah, blah. The problem is for a common line interface, ooh, you run it only once, not that great. If you are doing like function as a service, GVM, not that great. For this reason, if you already know Java, if you already know how to compile your jar, if you take the jar, it will be super easy using GraalVM to compile it to native code, and then you can every use case you ever dreamed of. And the problem, if you take a normal Spring Boot application, 
you try to grow VM to native is that because it uses a lot of reflection, a lot of magic under cover, GraalVM doesn't know how to infer what it should compile or not. If you make everything declarative, then GraalVM can follow the path that you follow as well, and then compile everything to native code. And at this point, you have very fast command line interfaces in Java. Well, not at this point, but a bit, bit further into the future. So the key takeaway is that Spring Boot loves Kotlin, as you all do. Um, thanks for your attention. Uh, I think um, there is some time for QA. You can, uh, you can read my blog. I try to publish weekly posts. You can follow me on Twitter. And more importantly, if you want to do the same stuff as I did here on stage, there is a repository for that where uh, it's on GitHub, so you can try and for each step, you have, uh, you have the, 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 the little logical step that goes uh, to the next step, just as I, I did here. Any question? Hey, OK. Thanks. Thanks, thanks a lot. So um, thanks for the nice uh, presentation, uh, Nicola. Um, so the DSL, the bins, and the router DSL are production ready. You can already use them uh, in production. I would advise to mainly use the router DSL and the reactive stuff for now. It's perfectly integrated into uh, Spring Boot at bins, and that works. For the bins DSL, as uh, um, uh, it was shown in the presentation, there is some lifecycle issue with uh, Boot, so you have to use initializer, and the integration is not that, that good. Uh, that, that's why I have started uh, a Spring Foo uh, to uh, go the next step uh, into leveraging an explicit and declarative Kotlin DSL to configuring a Spring Boot application. So in a nutshell, it's just applying the same uh, principle that are currently used in bins and router and applying to this new application DSL. Uh, this part, the application DSL, is super new. Uh, I'm going to work on that quite a lot, and already 10 external contributors have contributed to the project, so it's not just about using it, it's also about uh, maybe provide some uh, pull requests, uh, give some feedbacks, create some issues. It's quite easy, in fact, it's just functional code, it's just uh, some kind of DSL on top of regular uh, Spring framework uh, API, so it's quite, quite easy to contribute, in fact. Um, and um, so in Spring Foo, there is this DSL for Kotlin, uh, there is also the DSL for Java, so these two things are quite experimental, uh, and I'm not sure uh, how long it will take to incubate. Uh, there is a lot of people interested, so I tend to think we will make it production ready. I'm uh, not sure exactly how, but uh, I tend to think that would be the case. There is also other features uh, like uh, official coroutine support. So we are going to support officially coroutines in Spring Framework 5.2. Uh, that will be available in Boot 2.2. Uh, if we get Coldstream support, but I have token with uh, Roman uh, about that, and I think we should get that. So in the next major uh, spring version, there will be coroutine support, and that's important because, um, uh, like you said, not everybody needs to use the Reactive API because uh, maybe you, you just want to build a small CRUD application that leverage uh, a non-blocking runtime. So uh, we are going to provide a coroutine API on top of the Webflux support, uh, Spring Data MongoDB support, and also we have announced last week that we are working on uh, a reactive SQL initiative, which is called R2DBC, and we are going to provide reactive and coroutine uh, API on top of um, SQL with PostgreSQL support, and that will be production ready next year. So this part is ready to be production ready. The coroutine support uh, is going to be production ready uh, uh, next year, including the SQL support, and that's something super new and super useful, I, I think. And the, um, the application DSL uh, will take a little bit more time to mature, but I'm yeah, super motivated to, to, to make it production ready at some point. Not sure exactly how. Uh, will it be integrated into Spring Boot? Uh, will it be another thing? I, I'm not sure. It's about all, all about the question, is Spring Boot equals auto-configuration, or is Spring Boot something that could leverage two models, auto-configuration and a declarative approach with this kind of DSL? Uh, time will say uh, what is a good answer, but uh, feel free to provide uh, feedback and contribute to, to Spring Foo. Thanks. The, the interesting stuff about this initiative is that before, I mean, when I went to create a, spring, a, a, a normal Spring project, uh, I 
told my team, guys, go, go home and see you in two days. Then I craft my POM and I handle my version and I create a use case, everything fine-tuned that I wanted it to do. And Spring Boot was meant to address that because now with Spring Boot, you can create a project with everything ready in like 15 minutes. The POM is, everything is handled. The, 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 um, the versions in the, in the dependency are all addressed. It's very nice. And now people are bitching, yeah, but it's too magic. <laughs> and it goes from one side to the other, and now we go back to the, ah, I want to understand what happens. And now I have to declare everything again. So this is how it goes in computer science. Huh? It's just like one swing to the, si to the other side every now and then. Yeah, and I think that's uh, interesting, and I think both uh, make sense. I mean, it's, it's uh, about choice. It's about uh, your personal, personal preferences. So I tend to think that in Java world, people will stay uh, in majority to use the annotation uh, uh, auto configuration mode. I tend to think that uh, on Kotlin side, people try to uh, prefer explicit things, especially given the fact that with DSLs we, we are able to, to provide some kind of declarative but very short, very expressive configuration. So I, I think this kind of approach I is more Kotlin-ish, but uh, time will say. And it's perfectly okay to just use annotation uh, if you prefer with auto configuration that two different things, uh, not necessarily better or, or worse, it's just different. And you have th the idea is to give you the choice basically. We still have time for one more question. Yes, gentlemen in the end. Um, since we move all the configuration uh, and we declare them in the code, how do we deal with different configuration for different environments, for example, and uh, Spring Boot config server and so on? So you, you mean profiles? Well, yeah. And like well, there is a DSL for that. It's just like uh, for yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay. No, I, it's it's in the. I, 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 if I remember well, it's in the bin uh, definition DSL. There is a, a profile stuff. Yes. Confirmation. Yeah, yes. Or no. Okay. Yes. The idea is to, to put everything that, is, that, that does not vary uh, in the code via the DSL and just put the things that change in the environment in property files or uh, environment variables. So you can directly uh, access to the environment variables via env with the array uh, operator to access to any variable environment and you can just declare explicitly uh, it's not an annotation at configuration properties, but it's the same binding mechanism. So you declare uh, uh, properties uh, between brackets, configuration properties uh, class name with the prefix, and you can use the same uh, binding mechanism that you have in Spring Boot, but that's just explicit and without annotation. Yeah, that is very important. That it doesn't change the main Spring Boot engine. It's just a thin wrapper above it that leverage the that replaces the annotation stuff. So you keep the same mechanism yeah. inside so you can o also reuse all your code and what you did. So you reuse starters, you use configuration properties, you, re you reuse the logging infrastructure, uh, all this kind of thing I I are just reused but uh, declared in another way. Okay, thank you very much.